ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟಿಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕೀಗುರುಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಗಜಾತೀವನ್ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವೃಷ್ಣಪದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀವಿಶಾಕಾಂಬಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನ ಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ಸಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಶುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರೂಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೂಪ ಎವ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಬಿಂದ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾತಿ ಜೈ ಸೊ ಹೆಲ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಐ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರಿವೈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡಿಡ್ ಯೆಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿಲ್ ಸಮ್ ದ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ದ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಹೂ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ದ ದೀಪಿಕಾ ರಾಠೋಡ್ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಐ ಬೇರ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಯು ಮ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮಾತಾಜಿ by the doing of uh, good karma and with the right knowledge so knowledge there is two type material knowledge and transcendental knowledge and um, then then we have talked about the body and soul body is a perishable and that can be changed uh, change, soul can be changed with a different body then we have talked about mukti five types of mukti and uh, uh, three energies of god internal energy external energy and marginal energy and uh, internal energy is to attach with the lord krishna and other energy is as a path to go with uh, uh, the other energy is as it takes to the krishna and uh, then different types of actions karma to uh, karma karma and vikarma and uh, we have a right and we have uh, spoke about like we have to do karma in the after the which yoga karma one prasthasam because on that day we can do and we can do and we give we our life to the god and as we we think about the olden days like old olden days uh, and old like old people does right now is that we will do after what we will do after that after what never comes so whatever we have in our hand that we have to do make right now with our uh, healthy body and yeah that's it from my side hari krishna mata ji thank you so much ಸ್ಪೃಹಾ 
कर्माणि लिम्पणि मामे कर्मा फले स्पृहा माता जी यू प्लीज लुक अप द वर्ड इन द यू नो द मीनिंग अंडर द ऑलवेज अंडर द एस्पिरेशन प्लीज लुक डाउन फ्रॉम द श्लोका can you see the words they are translated by shrila prabhupad na never mam ni karmani all kinds of work limpanti do effect na nor ni my karma phale in fruitive action spruha aspiration iti thas mam ni ya one who abhijanati does no karma bhi by the reaction of such work na never sahe badhyate becomes entangled so when we since we are doing this bhagavad gita in 18 days we are not not reciting all the shlokas otherwise normally when we do you know regular bhagavad gita and you know detailedly then you are supposed to recite the shloka also Three four times so that you also get it, and then we read the pur the meaning of the word Sanskrit word, the translation, and the purport also. So uh, Shri La Prabhupada has made it so simple for us by translating all the Sanskrit words into English. So aspiration they no longer you know no the the Lord. Says there is no work that affects me, nor do I aspire for the fruits of action. No aspiration. He is not. He does. One who understands this truth about me also does not become entangled in fruitive. So what happens gradually when we are getting si purna mada purna vidam purna purna mudachyate. पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाया पूर्णमेवा वशिष्यते सो ही इज पूर्णम व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय पूर्णम कंप्लीट होल कंप्लीट होल मींस ही नीदर लैक्स एनीथिंग नॉर ही वांट्स एनीथिंग सेशिएटेड कंप्लीट व्हाई वी गेट इनटू ऑल दिस मटेरियल एक्टिविटीज बिकॉज़ वी आर इनकंप्लीट दैट इनकंप्लीटनेस इज देयर इन आवर कॉन्शियसनेस we are either hankering for something or we are lamenting for something but when we attach to purnam you know to the person who is complete we start experiencing that completeness why do we have aspirations because we are incomplete so lord doesn't have any aspirations because he is complete and gradually when we understand this and we start serving him we also start experiencing that completeness so now uh, any more points any additions archana mata ji are you there payal rajnikant mata ji were you there for the class yesterday mata ji archana हरे कृष्ण माता आई आई गेस दीज ऑर्डर एडेड ऑल हर पॉइंट्स लाइक द सेम बी स्पोक अबाउट द हाउ हाउ टू इन ऑर्डर टू गेट ट्रांस ट्रांस सेंडल नॉलेज वी नीड टू फर्स्ट परफॉर्म कर्म योग वी नीड टू अटेंड कर्म योग देन ओनली वी कैन गेट दैट नॉलेज स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज एंड वी स्पोक अबाउट टू टाइप्स ऑफ नॉलेज विच इज material knowledge and the second one is spiritual knowledge and uh, you you have added the point that uh, knowledge will definitely come from discipline so we need to have conscious discipline so the, in order to uh, attain the spiritual knowledge and we spoke about two kinds of people who are sura and asura where suras are considered as uh, uh, people who have desires but also they worship demigods and do yagnas so and they follows the ashrama dharmas whereas asuras enjoy and break all the principles and we spoke about uh, internal potency and external potency of uh, the lord where internal is uh, internal is managed by radha rani and Dur and external potency is by durga devi where uh, durga devi 
stops some people to reach to lord because they have they hold lot of grief and uh, durga devi doesn't want them directly to reach out to lord and uh, yeah we spoke about five bhavas how to develop five bhavas like i actually missed to write one which i wrote actually servant friend parent lover and i i forgot the fifth one mati ji is shantaras dasyaras sakhyaras uh vatsalyaras and madhuryaras shanta is the first one neutrality then second is dasyaras in the mood of servant sakhyaras as a friend vatsalyaras as a parent parental love and uh, madhurya ras as a lover so this uh, the way we experience the pleasure in relationship with krishna also varies according to our surrender so uh, now we will start with karma yoga to sum up uh, now arjuna is getting confused all throughout and the lord is you know dissipating all his uh, doubts you know one by one so chapter number 5 karma yoga action in krishna consciousness so i will bring about some clarity between the karma yoga of chapter 3 and karma yoga of chapter 5 now how are we progressing in bhagavad gita first of all the lord explain that one must you know the human birth is meant to elevate ourselves spiritually so firstly if you uh, instead of having an animalistic life you regulate it and come to the you know standard of uh, uh, regulated life you have desires but regulate them sakam karma then once you are come into sakam karma sakam karma means working for your fulfillment of your desires so sakam karma first you do in sakam karma the karma kanda section that is uh, offering you know uh, a portion of your results to demigods is recommended for those who don't have don't have that much understanding you know and great gradually when you do sakam karma fulfillment of desire you come to nishkam karma then you understand when you purify you start understanding better you come to nishkam karma nishkam karma means were i mean performing your duties under varna ashrama without any uh, you know uh, expectation of fruits you work as a matter of duty and when you purify further you understand who is god so lord spoke about transcendental knowledge because without regulating yourself you will not even understand who is god and then he speaks about the lord and his qualities transcendental knowledge he spoken to arjuna and now after uh, attaining you know uh, uh, transcendental knowledge the lord now talks about karma yoga uh, this is karma yoga in action in krishna consciousness earlier the karma yoga we were per- performing was prescribed duties when we don't have knowledge of god but when we get knowledge of god how do you perform karma yoga that is also known as buddhi yoga or devotional service so they are all connected karma yoga plus jnana yoga transcendental knowledge is equal to bhakti yoga first you are working without knowledge of god and you were offering the fruits of your action uh, as a sacrifice after which you gain and un- you are uh, capable of understanding god you gain knowledge about him and when you perform both together now you know how what activities to undertake which are going to bind you 
and how to dovetail your activities in such a way that you don't have any fruitive reaction right so karma yoga arjuna vacha sanyasam karmana krishna punar yogam cha samsashi yachreha iti yorekam tanme bruhi sinishtitam translation and purport by shila prabhu pat shila prabhu pat ki jai arjuna said o oh krishna first of all you ask me to renounce work and then again you recommend work with devotion now will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial so now again arjuna is confused on one end you ask me to uh, give up you know work work binds you he says it has reaction and uh, it it entangles you further into you know cycle of birth and death arjuna so arjuna is still confused so we see that in text 16 to 18 of the fourth chapter krishna first glorifies gyana and spoke of action in inaction and inaction in action that how a person uh, even though acting on the material plane does not incur reaction if he is doing it uh, on the you know order of krishna on behalf of krishna and when he is doing it on his own account he gets entangled so here again he is confused gyana yoga by gyana yoga you can come to the platform krishna says that but how how gyana yoga helps so he is thinking that gyana yoga is different karma yoga is different gyan is different karma yoga is different they are four different and then in text 41 krishna glorified both gyana and renunciation renunciation of work also krishna says. so many things he says you know arjuna is confused he again ordered arjuna to fight in the head. get up and fight now he is confused on one hand he says you know give up work don't get entangled and here he is asking me to fight now what do i do so here uh, shloka number 2 shri bhagwan uvacha sanyasa karma yogascha nishreya sakarava ubhav tayostu karma sanyasat karma yogo vishishyate translation and purport by shila prabhu pat shila prabhu pat ki jai the personality of god had replied the renunciation of work in devotion the renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation but of the two work in devotional services better than renunciation of work so now the question is which is better renunciation of work taking sanyasa or uh, uh, detachment which is better detachment or renunciation so both are actually the same the only difference is that uh, renouncing by you know by will and force does not take care of uh, uh, what you say the senses again getting attracted to sense objects you have renounced everything gone to the forest to serve the lord like there is a story of bharat maharaj bharat maharaj uh, he he had gone to the forest he had left his kingdom and uh, there uh, what happens is you see when in ashtang yoga in the coming chapter you will see that there are stages of progression even for people who perform the mechanical form that is dhyana yoga they go to the forest they meditate they focus their you know eye sight on the tip of the nose and they breathe in a certain way live in a certain way and then they are able to experience that happiness contentment you see but what happens is when he is going up you know he comes to the bhava stage when he is going up for further meditation as you you know 
get less dependent on the material nature you move up into deeper forest so that you are not disturbed he is just heading up and he sees a uh, you know deer uh, stag uh, deliver a baby in the middle of a stream when a tiger is chasing it the tiger is chasing the stag and it delivers a baby stag in the middle of water and as soon as it delivers and it is still running to save its life the tiger kills the mother and the stag is lying in a very helpless situation in the water now a devotee a person who is self realized will naturally have compassion for the other living being so he is he just instinctively you know he just goes and picks up that stag to save its life and then he says now if i am going to leave this stag here and go up this stag will surely die it's just born there's nobody to take in such dangerous animals are there so what it does he says i will he postpones his program to go up and he makes a small hut and he's taking care of the stag and the stag grows and he develops attachment for the stag he's uh, giving it grass everything and he forgets all about meditation and soon death comes and when he dies you know that stag has gone into be the forest and he is thinking when will that stag return and he dies the result is that in the next birth he is born as a stag because he was contemplating that so whatever is the state of your mind at the time of death you attain that so uh, so you have renounced everything but a slight bit of you know disturbance and you are off the track because you have still not come to understand you have still not developed the distaste uh, for material life and a taste for spiritual life but when you are detached you don't have any taste for sense gratification you are at a higher position the chance of falling down is not there at all so definitely the lord here certifies that detachment is better than just renunciating because there is no risk and how does this happen now here the lord is recommending that one must detach from the material plane and attach to the spiritual plane so both the activities have to be carried out but shila prabhupada has explained that instead of both these activities if you just take up attaching yourself to krishna detachment automatically takes place for example like i had earlier also cited that there is a milk pan boiling and you are holding a sauce pan with something in your hand so when you hold the milk pan you will automatically leave the sauce pan it's common sense so when you engage all your senses and mind in devotional service of the lord where is the time for sense gratification it automatically go you will develop a distaste for it so that is detachment you don't have any taste left uh, uh, like you know um, there are instances you know shila prabhupad he went to most advanced countries uh, he lived uh, if you go to vrindavan you will see radha damodar temple where he used to live in a small room cooking for himself cleaning himself serving the lord very happy there but shila prabhu pad though he went to such luxurious countries he was surrounded by beautiful young girls no taste for material sense gratification that is the sign of detachment to the personality of god had replied the renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation 
but of the two work in devotional services better than renunciation of work so this is uh, explained so three one who neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities is known to be always renounced such a person free from all dualities easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated o mighty on arjuna so what does this mean he neither likes nor hates why because what we like what we don't like this duality in the world like heat cold summer winter bitter sweet uh so darkness light so our mind is this material plane is such that uh, there is duality for everything there is an opposite and why this duality comes because of the of influence of the three modes of material nature for example um, so this like and dislike you know it is due to the influence of the modes of material nature but when a person you know he performs his duty just as uh, you know an offering to krishna for krishna's happiness he puts aside what he likes what he dislikes he 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 dotes his mind to accept krishna's authority and work only for his happiness he doesn't see like you know uh, there are instances when we think you know this is better that is better but the shastra says something is better then you follow the shastra you put aside uh, you know what you like what you dislike now here in arjuna's case he doesn't want to fight the battle because he does not like it he does not like to kill his relatives but he is not able to understand the uh, that what lord has created this entire kurukshetra is basically uh, you know it was so arranged so that you know all those who are gathered they are benefited spiritually people who are sinful they are released from their current body because if they are alive they are going to commit more sins by you know helping and serving the plan of duryodhana so when you serve the wrong cause also you get entangled so this discretion has to be there whom to serve whom not to serve we must serve we must cultivate the serving spirit this was the question of rashmi mata ji yesterday so one who hates nor desires the fruit of activities is known as always renounced he like i told you the example of sati savitri raja harish chandra then yudhishthir maharaj when it came to shri ram many people say you know why shri ram you know he renounced uh you know his wife or something like that you know because a responsible person he knows that the duty of the king is greater than duty of a householder the householder is only taking care of one family whereas the king he is responsible for taking care of millions of people and he has to set forth an example and he should see to it that the people in his kingdom they are not guy misguided or they don't develop you know uh, ill opinion so for him that responsibility is greater even at the cost of their comfort they do what is to be done as per their duty as per their shastra so that way they are free from reactions of work only the ignorant speak of devotional service karma yoga as being different from analytical study of material world sankhya those who are actually learned they say that he who applies himself well to one of these path achieves 
result of both. So these are progressive. You do your prescribed duty, you get purified, you understand knowledge about God, transcendental knowledge, your relationship with him. And you know, this nishkam karma plus jnana, it gives rise to buddhi yoga or bhakti yoga. They culminate. So here, so they, people think that sankhya, knowledge, jnana yoga is different from karma yoga. The truth is that they are all interlinked and they complement each other. The real student of Sankhya philosophy finds the root of the material world, Vishnu, and then in perfect knowledge engages himself in the service of Lord. So what is Sankhya Yoga? Sankhya Yoga is another name for Jnana Yoga only. So what does Jnana Yoga tell us, tells us? It tells us about the difference between matter and spirit. What is matter? What is spirit? What is the nature of spirit? What is the nature of matter? Matter is temporary, spirit is eternal. So this is the root of the tree. Okay, you have come to know what is the root of the tree. Then what should you do? Should you just sit idle by knowing that this is the root of the tree? You must water the root. Water the root is acting in knowledge. You know that the tree needs water. That is knowledge. So, when you get right knowledge, you have to put it into action. That is what is Bhakti Yoga. Therefore, in essence, there is no difference between the two because the aim of both is Vishnu. So, there is no difference in them in the sense both come to the same goal, whether it is uh, Jnana Yoga or Karma Yoga. Those who do not know the ultimate end say that the purpose of Sankhya and Karma Yoga are not the same. But one who is learned knows unifying aim in these different processes. The aim of all these processes is one. But uh, uh, some people, you know, they misinterpret. Five. So one who knows the position reached by means of analytical study can also be attained by devotional service. And who therefore sees analytical study and devotional service to be on the same level sees things as they are. So a person who understands that the purpose of knowledge is to reach Vishnu, he actually has the correct vision. Normally, you know, based, uh, polluted with our old personal, you know, concoction, we misinterpret things. But the right way to see things is that <coughs> all these processes, all knowledge that we can have, whether it is material or spiritual, is only to reach Vishnu. He is the goal. So six, merely renouncing all activities yet not engaging in devotional service of the Lord cannot make one happy. But a thoughtful person engages in devotional service can achieve the supreme without delay. So Srila Prabhupada has given a very good example for uh, this, you know, that suppose a person has a hundred rupee note. So what does it mean? He has the 10 rupee note also, 50 rupee note also, 20 rupee note also, isn't it? So a person who is engaged in devotional service, it means that he, he is doing karma yoga also, he is doing jnana yoga also. They are all a part and parcel, not separate. So Srila Prabhupada uh, explains that... Uh, there are some people, you know, who try to attain God only by Jnana Yoga or, you know, scriptural studies. They are engaged in the study of Sankhya philosophy, whereas the Vaishnava sannyasis are engaged in the study of Bhagavadam philosophy, which affords proper commentary on Vedanta Sutra. So I'm, I must tell you this, that when Srila Vyasdev, Vyasdev, he, uh, you know, 
earlier the vedas they were only shruti they were not in scripted form people used to hear and the memory was so great they used to pass it on by hearing to the next generation so the process of transferring knowledge was through hearing but as the memory grew weak people got so more disturbed with their material desires the memory to retain the vedas was and shila vyas dev he realized this that people of kalyuga will be mand buddhi mand bhagya so he compiled the, all the vedas in scripted form he trans wrote all the vedas and after writing the vedas he thought that their mental capacity of people to understand this knowledge will not be there so what he did he wrote the 18 puranas why he wrote the 18 puranas out of these 18 puranas six puranas are written for people who are in the mode of ignorance six puranas are written in the mode of passion and six puranas are written in the mode of goodness because people are of different sorts are under different influences by the modes of material nature they are under rajogun tamogun satvagun so the understanding varies according to the influence of the guna so he wrote like six puranas uh, in the mode of uh, ignorance for people like people who are interested in meat eating you know and they had don't have the ability to understand all this because the mind is such you know the conditioning of the mind is such that the purity level is low so for them okay you don't want to you want to eat meat okay regulate it offer it to goddess kali and you eat sacrifice and you eat otherwise you are going to incur lot of sin then there are puranas in rajoguna uh, for people like you know who are passion driven like that there are puranas commentaries on people in satvagun but amongst all these you know gradually from the lower mode to the higher mode satvagun so once you follow the lower puranas then you must gradually graduate to mode of passion and then from mode of passion you must graduate to mode of goodness satva gun so this uh, shrimad bhagavatam purana is the highest amongst the puranas this is considered because it is known as amal purana one can understand it only after complete purification and by reading this you know that is why the, this bhagavat sapta all these things are very popular because it is unanimously agreed by our sages that this is amal puran so so vaishnava sanyasis they follow the uh, vedanta sutra or the amal puran at, as the highest seven yoga yukto vishuddhatma vijitatma jitendriya sarvabhutatma bhutatma kurvan api nalipyate translation and purport by shila prabhupad shila prabhupad ki jai one who works in devotion who is a pure soul and who controls his mind and senses is dear to everyone and everyone is dear to him though always working such a man is never entangled so here the words vijitatma jitendriya vishuddhatma so by this gradual process of first nishkam karma uh, gyan knowledge everything one gets purified he gets purified uh, of his material desires and he engages in the service of lord that is bhakti yoga uh, action in krishna consciousness and he works he controls his mind and senses and is dear to everyone why he is dear he is got rid of anger he is got rid of hatred he serves everyone without any ego everybody likes him you know he does so that is why they say you know this one of one of the 
नेम्स गिवन टू युधिष्ठर महाराज इज अजात शत्रु मतलब ही डजेंट हैव एनिमी he he has no enemy because he is so gentle people who are self realized they become so gentle they don't have fights they don't have enmity they don't criticize all these qualities they develop do always working such a man is never entangled because he is never acting on his behalf his only purpose intention is to please the lord no matter even if he is sweeping even if he is cooking he is never entangled he does not like to hear anything except topics relating to krishna so sometimes you see we don't develop taste in chanting we don't develop taste in serving why because still lot of cleansing is required so that process is prescribed in bhagavad gita so such a person he has his only business becomes he only likes what is related to the lord nothing else so he does not like to hear anything except topics relating to krishna he does not like to eat anything which is not offered to krishna and he does not wish to go anywhere if krishna is not involved therefore his his senses are controlled a man of controlled senses cannot be offensive to anyone one may ask why then was arjuna offensive in the battle wasn't he in krishna consciousness arjuna was only superficially offensive because all the assembled persons on the battle field will continue to live individually so it was sometimes you know lord he makes us a hero in his film sometimes he makes us a villain in his film sometimes we are just a character artist so without opposition and getting attached to what we are made we must perform when we take the responsibility when we start believing that we are the hero of the film and the person who is making the film is nothing then the problem starts but when we accept whatever role he gives us then we incur no sins 8 and 9 a person in divine consciousness although engaged in seeing hearing touching smelling eating moving about sleeping and breathing always knows within himself that he actually does nothing at all why inaction inaction because he is doing it for god like for example i had given somebody is going and fighting on the war front he kills 100 soldiers of the enemy side but he is not sinful why because he is doing it on the account of a higher authority he is not accountable he is doing it on order of someone and in the coming shlokas we'll understand that who is responsible for sin Uh, who are the doers because while speaking evacuating receiving or opening or closing his eyes he always knows that the only material senses are engaged in their object and that he is aloof from them it's like you know watching the traffic go by on the road standing on the footpath he sees everything happening in his life you know from an external point of view his body is eating he knows that he is the soul and this body has been given to him by god to engage his senses in his service 10 one who performs his duty without attachment surrendering the result unto the supreme lord is unaffected by sinful reaction as a lotus leaf is untouched by water so though he is in the material world he is doing everything so this entire bhagavad gita you see it's not just spoken for arjun it is spoken for all of us that even we can live like that you don't need to separately go to the forest renounce everything while your mind is still dwelling on material things 
you are where your mind is you are sitting in the forest and your mind goes away to a fridge shop to a coffee shop to a hotel of oh, what use is that that is just pretension one should be situated in knowledge and then do one's duty with detachment without knowledge one cannot work with detachment because he will be carried swayed away by his instincts of material desire so what, what that is why they say you know why animals are less intelligent they are just swayed about away by their instincts suppose there is a bone on the road the dog will not see that a truck is coming and it is going to crush me he just jump that instinct to enjoy that bone eat that bone sense gratification is so strong and also they don't have you know a higher intellect to think what will be the consequences they just jump and and people who want to enjoy unrestrictedly like that they are as good as animals it is only our ability to you know control our mind and senses which makes us a higher being the yogis am abandoning attachment act with body mind intelligence and even with the senses only for the purpose of purification so these yogis also who go away to forest and meditate on the chaturbhuj form of lord uh, this will be explained in the next chapter they also do this for their purification because they are also not sufficiently purified uh, to you know uh, experience or realize god one has to develop you know sufficient uh, purity that is why they say if you want to understand god at least live in sattva guna otherwise it's not possible for you to understand god if not anything so that is why uh, shila prabhupad you know he uh, gave us the four regulative principles and if you follow that at least you will uh, remain away from sinning in future whatever you have done previously the prarabdh cannot be changed but the coming uh the back you know the since we have committed in the past they are extinguished the prarab we have to go through and in future so what is the way that you uh finish off your account of sins suffer or enjoy as per your past sin in the present but sin no further how will you not sin further by regulating your life with the regulative principles because if you don't regulate your life and you don't engage in service the senses are so so strong they are going to get into some activity if you don't put them to use in some positive activity they are going to create havoc the nature of the senses is like that so so what does he do the yogi he engages his mind intelligence his ego his gross senses his subtle senses everything in concentrating on parmatma and that is how he gets purified this kind of a person he has no false ego for he does not believe that he is the material body or that he possesses the body he knows that he is not this body and this body does not belong to him so why why do we feel sorrowful like you know there was a person uh, he sold his house and he sold the house and he got the token amount and uh, the papers were signed and they were going to the registrar's office and all and suddenly he got the news you know they they were they signed the registration form and all that the house has caught fire so this person he he is happy and the person was he says that uh, thank god i sold that house you know 
because it has caught fire and then suddenly some the pun comes and says you know that uh, no the registry was not done because there was some error and again he is morose it is the same person same house what was changed is the attachment to that house it changed because of the proprietorship when we think that something belongs to us the loss it causes grief but when we start thinking that nothing belongs to us everything is krishna's property where is the question of grief nothing was mine nothing is going to be mine i am here to serve i will serve and i will go if i have to uh, you know face sorrowful uh, situation i will face it just like you know summer and winter is and come season come sorrows and happiness also they come in our life and they go if without any extraneous effort they are like seasons based on our sense perception we feel we are in grief because something that our mind is aligned to is not happening so we think so the happiness and distress of this world shila prabhupad has explained suppose there is a person and you dip his face in water in a bucket of water and he is gasping for breath with force and just for a second when you lift his head up he breathes there and he feels so relieved so this material world is like that actually it is a place of misery we are in jail and durga mata is the jailer she is here to reform us punishing us sometimes rewarding us keeping us away and only till we are completely reformed we are not going to get out of this jail and what is the reformation you should be happy only in service of lord this is the complete 100% condition to get out of this jail so that gasp of breath that we get for momentarily we perceive that as happiness and where when our face is forcibly dipped in water we perceive that as misery because we are not comfortable physically but here in bhagavad gita the lord has said that our comfort discomfort like dislike spiritual happiness is above all this a person who has tasted the spiritual happiness for him material miseries don't exist like prahlad maharaj just imagine somebody throwing you down from a mountain to kill you and you are still not disturbed why because this body is temporary it has to go maybe it's god's plan a mindset like that very difficult to disturb him because he has accepted everything belongs to lord even me where is the reason to lament the steadily devoted soul attains unadulterated peace because he offers the results of all the activities to me whereas the person who is not in union with the divine who is greedy for the fruits of his labor becomes entangled very very clearly explained by the lord so the next four verses answers a question krishna already discussed in the third and fourth chapters namely who is the doer is a very important subject matter in the coming now 13 14 15 15 we are going to understand who is responsible when you see an activity how do you differentiate who is the doer who will incur the result who will get the you know reaction of the result when the embodied living being controls his nature and mentally renounces all actions he resides happily in the city of nine gates the material body neither working nor causing work to be done so the soul it is tied down forcibly in a body dehi 
देह मीन्स बॉडी देहि मीन्स वन हु लिव इन द बॉडी एंड दिस बॉडी हैज नाइन गेट नाइन गेट्स आर टू आईज टू इयर्स टू नॉस्ट्रल्स वन माउथ वी हैव जेनिटल्स एंड वी हैव एवैक्शन सो दीज आर द नाइन गेट्स इन अवर बॉडी and through this nine gates only sense gratification takes place if these nine gates are not there but a person who has closed all these gates all these gates of the body and he is rejoicing with the supreme parmatma in his heart where is the question of you know going opening one of these gates for sense gratification he has achieved happiness which is beyond the happiness derived from this temporary nine gates the embodied soul lives in the city of nine gates the activities of the body or figurative city of the body are conducted automatically by its particular modes of nature the soul although subjecting himself to the conditions of the body can be beyond those conditions if he so desires we have seen bhakti tirtha swami maharaj he was a very senior devotee of shrila prabhu pad and his father was the attorney general in america a very high post his bedroom had a swimming pool like he 40 feet by 40 feet and so moneyed he was but he understood and he joined shri la prabhu pad and he when he left his body he was suffering from cancer i mean a normal person if he is in this kind because the prarabdh we cannot forego whatever we have done in the present we have to go through that but law takes care of our past sins and the sins in future so even before he left his body so much pain you know his stomach had become he had liver cancer and the stomach became big because the water retention is there but if you see him before he uh, you know left his body it was so blissful there are examples you know they are physically because they are not identifying with the body the pains and pleasures of the body they are their mind is engaged in rejoicing with the lord they think about nothing else so the so here the when the embodied living being controls his nature mentally and renounces all actions he resides happily in the city of nine gates Fourteen, the embodied spirit, master of the city of his body, does not create activities, nor does he induce people to act, nor does he create fruits of action. All this is enacted by the modes of material nature. Fifteen, nor does the supreme Lord assume any one sinful or pious activities. Embodied beings, however, are bewildered because of the ignorance which covers their real knowledge. So, now in these three shlokas, it is explained. You know, who is the doer? There are three uh, things involved here. One is the jiva, the atma. and one is the lord who is the who is also the doer because nothing happens without him and we have the material modes of nature prakriti now among this who will get the reaction so the jiva desires it could be a material desire it could be a spiritual desire so material desires are born when we interact with the three modes of material nature what we like what we dislike is born so when we are associating with the three modes of material nature we develop material desire on the same hand the internal potency of the lord when we 
associate with that energy we develop spiritual desires so the spiritual desires take us closer to the lord and material desires take us away from the lord so when a jiva desires something he turns to the lord suritam sarva bhutana the lord is surit a friend and benefactor a friend you know mitra is just like a social obligation but a surit he is your friend your well wisher and he wants to do good for you actual good for you suritam sarva bhutana so the lord he is inside our heart the jiva desires and the lord can see all the desires and he turns to the lord oh lord fulfill this desire the lord is so merciful that he sanctions the desire if the lord does not sanction a desire it will not be fulfilled and by sanctioning whom does he order to make the arrangement he orders material nature maya devi durga mata to make arrangements to fulfill that desire so the material nature the three modes of material nature they make arrangement for that particular desire to be fulfilled how now you have desired that you want to eat meat to eat meat raw meat you need teeth which can tear flesh you need claws which can you know kill and open slit so what the lord even the minutest of desires you know lord sees he says okay tathastu mata please arrange and the material nature makes the arrangement of a body where you have teeth which can relish flesh you have claws which can tear flesh like that arrangements for material sense gratification are made and just look at this the lord is so merciful that he goes with you even in the worst worst of bodies you are transmigrating because of desires from one body to another even if you are born as worm in a stool the lord will accompany you as parmatma in the heart and he will not leave you can you just expect this kind of love in the material world no matter what your condition is he is still with you he is still making arrangements for you to enjoy and then people say why did lord no uh, you know let uh, duryodhana commit sins why when he knows that we will get entangled why does he let us commit sins because the lord is lord has made this arrangement because of our desires and the lord give us gives us full freedom to make choices and the intellect to make these choices are born out of our association so just see what important role association plays in our life so uh you know man uh, proposes and lord disposes so he sanctions all the desire so in any activity there are three doers without the sanction the desire cannot be fulfilled and without the facility also the desire cannot be fulfilled but the person who takes the reaction is the jiva who makes the desire who has that desire so the jiva desires and he suffers the repercussions or the pleasures or pain god is not responsible because this jiva has made the choice of his association that minute independence we always have to make a choice what you want to associate with and what you don't want to associate with so how can god take responsibility you chose to associate with the three modes of material nature you did not choose to associate with devotees of the lord or 
Lord Himself. How do you associate with Lord? By hearing about Him. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, all these processes are there to associate with the Lord. And gradually when you associate with the Lord, your material desires are extinguished. So that, like that, for every activity, there are three doers, the Jiva, Paramatma and the Prakriti, material nature. Now we come to Shloka number 16. When, however, one is enlightened with the knowledge by which nations is destroyed, then his knowledge reveals everything as the sun lights up everything in daytime. Suppose, you know, you are in the dark. You can't even see your hand. Like, suppose you are searching for something, maybe your pen in the dark. You open this drawer, it's not there. You open that drawer, it's not there. You go behind a cupboard, it's not there. And suddenly, you know, electricity is back. And you see the pen is lying on the floor clearly. So a person in knowledge, a person who gets this advantage of knowledge can see things clearly. Who is the doer? How I am responsible for my actions? How I should make choices? This clarity comes to him. When, however, one is enlightened with knowledge, Nations is destroyed. So, what happens is how this nations is destroyed. Therefore, one has to seek out such a bona fide spiritual master and under him learn what Krishna consciousness is. For Krishna consciousness will certainly drive away all nations. As sun drives away darkness. Even though a person may be in full knowledge and he is not this body but is transcendental to the body, he still may not be able to discriminate between the soul and the super soul. However, he can know everything well if he cares to take shelter of a perfect bona fide Krishna conscious spiritual master. So this science is so deep. Even the Devi Devatas, Lord himself says in coming shlokas, they cannot understand me. I am so deep. Nobody can understand me. How I can be understood only when I choose to reveal myself in the heart of a devotee. Isopnisha. Shloka number 17-18 Only those people whom Krishna agrees to reveal himself, they can know about Krishna. That is why they always say revealed scriptures, revealed scripture. This knowledge cannot be known to all. So how does that happen? When a person who is self-realized, in whose heart Krishna has revealed himself, we go and take his guidance and serve him. This is the process. A representative of the God never claims that he is God, although he is paid all respect, ordinarily paid to God because he has knowledge of God. One has to learn the distinction between God and the living entity. Lord Sri Krishna therefore stated in the second chapter that every living being is individual and the Lord is also individual. They were all individuals in the past and they are individuals at present and they will continue to be individuals in the future, even after liberation. So the jiva and the entity are separate. Qualitatively they are one, but quantitatively there is a huge difference. God is very big, just like, you know, and we are very small, Anu is small. So, uh, people who understand this and they approach a bona fide guru who has realized God, this relationship, only then under uh, his guidance, when they serve Lord, they will also get self-realized. So 17, when one's intelligence, mind, faith and refuge are all fixed in the Supreme, then one becomes fully cleansed of all misgivings through complete knowledge. 
and thus proceed straight on the path of liberation so when you are engaged in the service of such a guru all your everything is cleansed your intelligence mind faith refuge everything is fixed in the supreme the self realized person shows you the path a krishna conscious person can thoroughly understand that there is duality in krishna and equipped with such transcendental knowledge one can make steady progress on the path of liberation duality exists because of the influence material influence everything which is done like auspicious inauspicious uh they in astrology you see you have an auspicious time inauspicious time to this to this work you do it will be auspicious inauspicious this duality is there in the material world in the spiritual world because everything is done for god for his pleasure everything is auspicious so a person who is following that principle in the material world everything that he does is auspicious there is nothing inauspicious about it because he is doing it for krishna the humble sages by virtue of true knowledge see with equal vision a learned and a gentle brahmana cow and elephant a dog and a dog eater so from here the symptoms of such a person come equality they see lord in they are able to perceive lord in every one there is lord in dog in elephant in every equipoise such people you know they don't discriminate ki bhai uh, in uh, you know in somewhere i think shila prabhu pat a priest christian priest was arguing with him and he said killing animals is not good and the priest said no but they don't have a soul and they are not very useful so who are we to decide which living being is useful and not useful everybody and ah, no problem ata ji so everybody here you see is creation of god as nothing is unimportant whatever god does is equally important so they are equipoised they are they are they have equal vision for everything the humble sages by virtue of true knowledge see with equal vision then to those whose minds are established in sameness and equanimity have already conquered the condition of birth and death they are flawless like brahman brahman is the effulgence which is coming out of the body of lord and thus they are already situated in brahman though they are in the material body they are already liberated there is uh this kind of mental state a person who gets a person who neither rejoices upon achieving something pleasant nor laments upon obtaining something unpleasant who is self intelligent who is unbewildered and who knows the science of god is already situated in transcendence he is not affected by the sorrows and pleasures of this world they say you know shrivas pandit i think he was uh, doing kirtana for chaitanya mahaprabhu and his son passed away he continued the kirtan and lord said they gave you the news that he passed away but you did not leave the kirtan he said my son also uh, i mean we are here for your service and in due, this due course there will be people in our lives who will come and go there will be situations pleasant and unpleasant but a person who is still engaged in this service it means he has understood the truth of this world he knows the ultimate purpose so they will not get deterred by the unpleasantness or pleasantness of situations around them such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense pleasure but is always in trance why is in trance samadhi trance means samadhi samadhi means you are completely focused 
and uh, now you are not disturbed by externality of this world enjoying the pleasure within he is not enjoying through the nine navadwara which i explained the nine gates of the body his enjoyment is now not dependent on any external impetus he is rejoicing with the parmatma in his heart he has realized his relationship and nothing attracts him in this way the self realized person enjoys unlimited happiness for he concentrates on the supreme so an intelligent 22 we have come to the sadhaka needs to fix this principle strongly in his intelligence sense gratification equals misery a sadhaka becomes free from material modes by a combination of intellectual conviction and higher taste so as you purify your taste for spiritual activity will increase earlier you are not feeling like chanting you are not feeling like going to the temple you are not feeling like reading shrimad all the scriptures as you purify your inclination will increase before giving up this present body if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the force of desire and anger he is well situated and is happy in this world so they will not react strongly to small provocations they know it's all temporary i am not this body somebody is insulting me or maybe abusing me or irritating me it is because of his conditioning why should i give him the independence to irritate me let him do what he wants by spoiling and getting into depression or grief we are contaminating our consciousness they come to this realization one whose happiness is within who is active and rejoices within whose aim is inward is actually the perfect mystic not the person who is going to the jungle and trying to close his eyes trying to close his ears he is here in the battlefield a person in like ambarish maharaj he was the king he was doing everything but even when durvasa muni you know he left a demon on him to kill him he was undisturbed it is a situation created by god he comes to this understanding so he is liberated in the supreme and ultimately he attains the supreme he attains all the good qualities of god gradually as he gets purified and he discharges devotional service those who are beyond the dualities that arise from doubts whose minds are engaged within who are always busy working for welfare of all living being and who are free from all sins achieve liberation in the supreme so what is the greatest welfare that we can do to anyone we can connect him to krishna because suppose a rich businessman son has you know got lost in some mela so somebody will give him chocolate somebody will give him food somebody might give him clothes but who is the best well wisher who will take him back to the father that person is the greatest help that one can do so even when you are serving others we must serve in such a way that you know they better permanently not temporarily if you give him food for one afternoon next day again he will feel hungry again the same suffering what's the use but if you take him to his father permanently the problem is solved so that is why when we are serving others also we must keep in mind ki what is the highest benefit i can do to this person those who are free from anger and all material desires who are self realized self disciplined and constantly endeavoring for perfection are assured of liberation in the supreme in the very near future so these people who are discharging devotional service uh, gradually definitely they are going to come to a point of 
liberation very soon if not now shutting out all external sense objects keeping the eyes and vision concentrated between the two eyebrows suspending the inward and outward breath within the nostrils and thus controlling the mind and senses and intelligence the transcendentalist aiming at liberation becomes free from desire fear anger one who is always in this state is certainly liberated so here lord is talking about dhyana yoga ashtanga yoga so what they do they for they control their mind and senses by yoga practices so that also is described in this chapter briefly but even after you know controlling so much they can get carried away but a transcendentalist aiming at li- becomes free from desire he has no desire the only desire he has is to flee naturally he becomes detached so that is why shila prabhupada in the beginning of the chapter said that detachment is higher than renunciation because the taste for sense gratification is only absent there is no taste a person in full consciousness of me knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities the supreme lord of all planet and demigod and the benefactor and well wisher of all living enti- entities attains free from material pangs of nature this is the last shloka and we are going to read this shloka because it is very important this is the peace formula which shila prabhupad has explained bhoktaram yajna tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram surid suridam sarva bhutanam gyatva mam shanti mrachati we are going to read the uh, translation also here bhoktaram the beneficiary yagya of all sacrifices tapasam and penances and austerities sarvaloka of all planets and the demigods thereof mahaishwaram the supreme lord suridam the benefactor sarva of all the living entities gyatva thus knowing mam me lord krishna shantim relief from material pang vrichati one achieves translation and purport by shila prabhu pa shila prabhu pa ki jai a person in full consciousness of me knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities the supreme lord of all planets and the demigods and the benefactor and well wisher of all living entities attains peace from the pangs of material miseries so the lord has explained to him that the result of all the tapasya we do all the traditions we follow all the yagyas we do sacrifices tapasam austerities ah i am the benefactor of all that o arjuna i am the master of the demigods so many times you know people say here krishna they they don't even understand that krishna is god even though bhagavad gita has spoken they say see him as like any other devata and they say he is himself saying that he is god so suppose you go and ask the prime minister of a country who are you what will he say my name is so and so and i am the prime minister of india will he say no i am something else here lord himself he showed the virat swarup to arjuna just for his understanding though virat swarup is too small for the lord because of his limited understanding he was not able to understand how big lord is 
so he had to show him i am all the gods i am all the planets i am the entire universe i am this i am that because our petty mind it cannot understand even in millions of words we cannot understand even anant sheshnag i said na even with his thousands of words he glorifies the lord he cannot glorify he is so big the greatest peace formula is simply this lord krishna is the beneficiary in all human activities men should offer everything to the transcendental service of the lord because he is the proprietor of all planets and the demigod thereon no one is greater than him he is greater than the greatest of demigods lord shiva and lord brahma in the vedas shweta swatara upanishad 6.67 confirms this the supreme lord is described as tam ishvara nam parama maheshwaram under the spell of illusion living entities are trying to be lords of all they survey for example we have the taj mahal shah jahan constructed the taj mahal is shah jahan there now to whom does the taj mahal belong now so the sense of belonging for the time being the lord gives you the some facility to have a property a house a car or something for the time being it all belongs to him by his mercy only when he sanctions he tells must be a material nature okay this this person wants to have a car he wants to enjoy going here and there provide him the chemicals are already there in the earth we have not manufactured iron we have not manufactured steel we have not manufactured plastic they are all there in the nature and they are put together in a form which satisfies you a facility is created temporarily as soon as you die the car does not belong to you everything belongs to krishna so for time being we get it for our use and then it is taken away so what is the point getting attached to them the science sense of proprietorship is the cause of our suffering so we have to forego this sense of proprietorship on everything we have this becomes the cause of our grief the lord is the master of material nature and the conditioned souls are under the stringent laws of material nature unless one understands these bare facts it is not possible to achieve peace in the world either individually or collectively no matter uh, just imagine god how big he is and we are trying to fight material nature with our limited strength so they say even it's a big struggle the three gunas are very strong even at the highest stage so many people have fallen down the attraction for the material world is so strong but you know the best thing is it becomes very simple for a devotee it it becomes like you know water in a uh, you know calf's hoof print this material world is like a big ocean of miseries and you have to go to the other side but people who surrender to god then god takes charge of them all their activities like lord krishna is taking charge of all arjuna's activities he promises also you will not incur any sin because you are doing this for on my order my desire when the desire is ours when the jiva desires himself then he gets the reaction but when he is working according to the lord's desire there is no question of proprietorship there is no questioning of incurring any sin that is what lord is explaining Thus, fifth chapter is a practical explanation of Krishna consciousness, generally known as karma yoga. The question, mental speculation as to how karma yoga can give liberation, is answered here with. 
to work in krishna consciousness is to work with the complete knowledge of the lord as the predominator such work is non different from transcendental knowledge direct krishna consciousness is bhakti yoga and jnana yoga is the path leading to bhakti yoga without knowledge you will never engage in these activities so krishna conscious means to work in full knowledge of one's relationship with the supreme absolute and the perfection of this consciousness is full knowledge of krishna or the supreme personality of godhead a pure soul is eternal servant of the god as his fragmental part and parcel he comes into contact with maya illusion due to the desire to lord it over maya and that is the cause of many suffering so that is a person who has understood that i am nothing i don't even you know my body also does not belong to me everything is the proprietor is god he attains to peace so we must slowly cultivate this mindset by serving the lord and gradually we will come to an understanding that Uh, lord is the proprietor bhoktaram sarva tapasam so this brings us to the end of uh, the chapter here in the end there is a brief introduction about the next chapter dhyana yoga there is gradual process of elevation in practice of yam niyam asana pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan samadhi the ashtanga yoga the briefly they are mentioned here uh, but these only preface perfection by devotional service they are not as good as devotional service so which alone can award peace so here lord himself has declared in this shloka that a person who engages in devotional service only will attain to peace so thank you all so much we'll have a little more time for your questions today if at all any we can also discuss the previous chapters so any questions or comments hello ma'am yeah uh, i wanted to ask um, you said uh, so we should uh, work in krishna uh, service to god so uh, what exactly then we should do matlab whatever work we are doing we should uh, uh, we should uh, give it to god or something like that i didn't know yeah understand. yeah yeah i'll tell you mata ji see from animalistic life you are we are now leading a life where we work only for our sense gratification have you seen anybody work without a salary would anybody want to work without a salary so we are working for our sense gratification but and when we work for our sense gratification we incur lot of sinful reaction so from unregulated sense gratification we should come to karma kand karma kand means offering you know different types of yagyas and sacrifices to the demi gods agents of god start with that but a person can directly come into krishna consciousness you follow your prescribed duties and gradually increase the devotional service you are in grastashram i think you are in grastashram only yes ma'am ha ah. so you do your prescribed duties because that is recommended you follow the principles the principles you know this principles of dharma are there that is you know uh, no meat eating no intoxication no illicit sex no gambling avoid these things because if you you cleanse and again like kunjar stan they say kunjar stan means like elephants bath the elephant takes bath in the river 
and then it cups out and it puts mud on its body i'll come to that prabhu ji so kunjar snan you must not do you go and you dip your you take a bath in the river then you come out and again start sinning that is not the you finish your account before and you stop sinning so for stopping that process you have to follow the regulative principles regulate your life at least try to live in sattva gun and it is later explained there are qualities so uh, this is very important and you try to offer a part of your fruits to god not 100% start with something some amount you dedicate to spreading this knowledge see we incur so much expense in printing these books preaching all this if we do not help this cause then this knowledge will die down i have seen you know missionaries other christians you know they go country to country they take so much so we have to take that responsibility to spread this knowledge to others in whatever capacity we can and gradually we will come to the material desires will start reducing you will experience it the things you 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 used to hanker for earlier it will not be there and these hankering the disturb us mentally you don't get something how disturbed you are even i have seen some people four marks less two marks less in 100% they are grief stricken some people commit suicide for useless reason this human birth is not meant for getting some houses getting some cars it is meant for purification how less these hankerings are becoming in you that is your wealth if you are taking back from this world a disturbed mind before your death you know you are thinking about your mango tree in the backyard you'll become a tree in the next world because please remember the nature of this world actually sankhya yoga we cannot explain in detail in this class okay okay mata ji you can answer it even now <laughs> please most welcome rohini mata ji yes mata ji uh i just thought that okay it's he has asked you so it's your means i just thought that uh, i can relate it and maybe uh, but i would like to listen your ओके विच क्वेश्चन माता जी सत्यनंद प्रभु जी क्वेश्चन इंटरेस्टिंग the moment it came so i just thought okay uh, i can answer but i also want to know that what is your perspective and uh, i also want to see whether i am thinking in right direction or there is something new i am yes so no sure sure mata ji so first we'll finish rashmi mata ji's question that uh, gradually you reduce your not even reduce you just increase your spiritual activity this is recommended you take out some time for reading you take us some time offer food to god if you cannot like some people you know they don't have uh, like patram pushpam palam toyam there is a standard of things which have to be offered to god the kind of food we offer so uh, so when you start doing that automatically you will your hankering will reduce so thank you so much mata ji i hope that answers your question 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, now uh, Prabhuji's question. I I somehow I cannot scroll up the chat. How do you do that? Um, can you, Prabhuji? I don't know. Huh, now, I, ma, uh, uh, Mataji, is, ma, is it wrong if we crave for the work done in a job? Nowadays, it is difficult to get work without craving. Your opinion, please, Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, we need to uh, uh, you know we need to maintain our body and soul together. For that we need to earn. In fact, the grastas have the responsibility of taking care of the other three ashramas. And you must also be competitive in work because now we are in the war. What is Arjuna doing? But without creating a mess for yourself, don't be so disturbed and carried away by the, you know, cravings that you forget the actual purpose of life. It has to be done because we are in the material world. We have to uh, fund the three ashramas, the brahmacharis, vanaprastha, the old people in a house, the sannyasis, people in temples who are dedicated to just propagation of this knowledge. Compete fairly. and uh, But don't compromise on your sadhana. Sadhana in the sense a respectable amount of time you should have if your work competing with others is taking away that time from you. Because please remember that time is your most expensive resource. If it is keeping you in such a disturbed condition that you don't even have time, 15-20 minutes a day to calmly sit and do service to Krishna, hear about him, go to the temple, or maybe chant your rounds. Then of what use is that? Your competence, whatever, maybe some few lakhs or millions you will make more. But that few lakhs and millions are not going to go with you at the time of your death. What will go with you is your peace the qualities you have acquired. So please, this the chapter is all about recognizing your wealth. So that wealth is also important, but it is secondary. Your first wealth is your peace of mind. And that will come only by attaching yourself. So for that temporary earning, you must not leave this occupation of permanent earning. Don't compromise on it. Because many people do that. Just like Bharat Maharaj, he forgot everything about going up, busy in the stack, bringing up the stack. And what happened at the time of death? He got the body of a stack. Because our mind is our ticket to our destination. You desire and that manifests the Lord sanctions and the material, uh, you know, energy. She creates the facility. It all starts with the desire. So what is your desire? The only minute independence we have is to choose. Material or spiritual. Always it is like that. Broad category. So in Grasta Ashram, we have to balance both. If you are a Grasta, you balance both. Don't compromise on this for that. I hope it answers, Prabhuji. Uh, yes, Mataji. Uh, I just want to say something that I cannot put by writing. Yeah. If I look back to my life, hmm. 
Prabhuji, there is some disturbance, Prabhuji. I, I will mute myself just a second. Now? Is it clear now, Mataji? Yes. Okay. Uh, I actually, for me, I used to visit this con. I used to serve Lord, uh, do sevas, uh, do danas. So, what I felt in last few years, uh, the problem here is uh, the what we say, craving, correct? The desires. So here, when we are doing our job, if we don't have for the worth of our job, what happens? Our manager or senior, they see, oh, this guy is an innocent guy. He's not asking me anything. So whatever I'm giving him, he's taking it away. He's taking it and going. So what they do, basically, they suppress. The person who is not asking, they keep them down. They don't, I mean, if you don't have any demand, uh, the senior people, they don't give you. They give to the other people, those are demanding or those are very close to them. So what I felt, Craving is not unnecessary. It is actually required for our work for whatever the work we are doing. So in that case, it should not uh, it should not create anything uh, wrong in our mind, or it should not it should not put us in in a different path or in a material path. So that is what my understanding. Because carving, if we don't do carving in this material world for our work or work, we won't get. No doubt there will be a spiritual path and we should not forget spiritual path. We should always uh, put our mind, heart and body or soul into the Lord's uh, seva, our sadhana. But we should not forget the material world also because in current days, this material world is very, uh, very materialistic, you can say. They are not into the right path. So everyone is running behind money. And if we don't grab for our work, we won't get it people will take it from our pocket. That is what my understanding. I just want to understand your opinion in this. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, Ma'am, you got mu unmuted. Yeah, Hare Krishna. So, Prabhuji, there is nothing wrong in earning money and being competitive. Arjuna was giving an excuse for not being competitive. And here the Lord said that being competitive for the right purpose is not wrong. And what is the right purpose is that ultimately... You must engage everything in the service of the Lord. If you are giving a major part of your income to propagation of Krishna consciousness or for dharma, like Srila Prabhupada, once a journalist asked me, you ask for a huge donation, how much do you need, you know? So he said, you give me all the money of the world, I will engage it in Krishna consciousness. I can engage the entire wealth of the world. So what is the engagement of your competitiveness is important. Where are you engaging this competitiveness? What is the intent behind being so competitive? That's important. If you are able to do that, and of course we should not see there is a Difference in between being simple and being foolish. We should be simple, but we should not be foolish. Because we are not purified to the extent that we can give up our prescribed duties. If you are 100% convinced, then you know you can forego your income, everything, give up your prescribed duties. But if you are not 100% engaged, then please don't give up. It will create more problems. So there is nothing wrong in being competitive, uh, provided the engagement is correct. Uh, Mataji, Rohini Mataji wanted to answer this question. Mataji, please, uh, you can give your input. 
no ma'am i don't want to <laughs> but yes i got uh, uh, to know that uh, so i was in a little uh, similar direction and uh, like uh, you took the uh, difference of geeta but i was going to share like this only <laughs> Yeah. I just wanted to know that uh, what will be the like uh, answer, and he this question is very beautiful because this is the genuine concern of uh, hmm. everybody nowadays. It is hmm. that whenever hmm. means uh, <clears throat> this kind of uh, uh, people are around, how to deal with it? <laughs> so. Uh, basically it is like uh, we need to be emotionally intelligent actually intended. there is a you know yeah uh, yes mataji, please was, continue mataji ha uh, so uh, i was saying that basically uh, we need to be very much uh, emotionally intelligent at the same time we have to perform our duties and at the same time we need to survive somehow here now this is a very beautiful game you have to balance <laughs> and now we have to balance it and this is the uh, like a, a test that how we are going to use our um, what we have learned so far wisdom uh, our mind how it is going to work and how we can use our intellect to deal with it to balance it yes correct that is what is knowledge how to engage your mind and senses in the service of lord without getting disturbed and even performing all your duties so devotees are handling doubly but uh, they get through it yeah you see a lot of our devotees are very high positions they are the ceos they are you know the mds they are doctors we have lawyers highly qualified iits they are doing very well professionally also and spiritually also so we are not uh, undermining the need this is not craving uh, this is I our think... responsibility when yeah. you want yeah when you want to enjoy yourself the result then, that is yes. craving that is craving this so is fulfilling is here... Yeah, yeah. I put I put this question the only reason behind that is because I have seen like when I was with Iskon associated regularly I was visiting, so I have seen uh, along with me few few Prabhuji's are there those who actually even if uh, the manager say no they will say Hare Krishna and will come. Sometimes I also suppose I mean I was also doing that I will say myself to Hare Krishna and will come back I will not demand, but after uh, after some period of time I realized actually I am not caring for it this is my worth. so we are a big confusion actually matlab when we I learn gita we, without any intelligence without any clear picture what happens sometimes uh, we myself also we, we go go into confusion where we say okay if we are asking something that is basically craving no if we have, if we have done our job uh, sincerely and if you are asking for our job not more than that or not less than that then that is not actually craving that is actually the worth of our work and that we should do yeah but to not to the extent to drive up to your to the your mind to the wall you know yes 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 like yeah, those prabhu ji are all the prop, those prabhu ji are also not wrong you know why because they chose their peace of mind to being competitive that again depends on our surrender they are happy with whatever they ha- have at that stage but when some injustice is being done you have but then don't get disturbed by it it's okay. not yes, happening yes. it's not happening it's not happening that should okay. not be there you must put forward your worth you must ask for your rightful you know whatever is your rightful uh, income or whatever it is but at the same time please do not get into grief disturb depression all this is contamination no, you do is- what has to be done but without getting disturbed so maybe those prabhu ji thought that if you we are going to put up this fight it will cause undue disturbance to our spiritual practices so they made their choice uh, so they are yeah. also not wrong 
no no yeah to add this matter you what it depends after... on the person yeah matter yeah. i just want to add Please, yeah. yeah yeah after what happened after few days they left the job and they started in another organization so basically they they saw that okay here hmm. i'm not getting so i will leave this job and i will start working in other other organization and i will get whatever i want so they left but for me what happened actually i stayed there and repeatedly that same mistake mm. happened with me for few years then i started demanding then i said no this is not right whatever i supposed to get i should get so the, and and mm. then then what happened then something happened and i got some part of it my worth but still then and as you said griefing mm. so i never i never grieved this is a i actually thank you to iskon and some other spiritual gurus um those who have uh, helped me to learn the life uh, lessons and they have given me uh, some lessons some stories some facts where i understood there is nothing to grief if we mm-hmm. grief we are actually we if, if we grief or if we cry or if we are sitting in a sad or idle place uh, we actually uh, lose our life rather doing that we should uh, go with krishna consciousness we should chant or we should do meditation and uh, sankirtan to get out of these all uh, human created or materially created things yes prabhu ji yes so those people they found another way some uh, many a times you know if an association is disturbing you it is better to change it yes. because even if we try you know the association has its effect on us our psyche you know it remains so better is that you know if you have bad association which is disturbing you all the time if you are getting disturbed better to change it if you have to put up with it like then you put it up uh, without getting frustrated or not letting it affect you that is the right because your mindset your peace is more expensive than anything else and you don't know when death is awaiting us so even a slight bit of disturbed mind can land you in a very bad body <laughs> so it's not worth it so uh, you must do be simple but not foolish but it should not create a disturbance in your life that's all Thank you. So, any time. more? You're welcome, Prabhu Ji. Any more questions? We are already over time, so I think we'll end the session here. Pancha kalpate rubhyas chakripa sindhu ba eva cha pati tanam pavane bhyo vaishna vibhyo namo nama anant koti vaishna brin ki jai shila prabhu pat ki jai Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, ma'am.